We now look at another divide and conquer algorithm. This is a geometric problem. Given a set of points, we would like to compute the closest pair of points among them. So recall that at the beginning of this set of lectures, to motivate the need for more efficient algorithms, we consider the example of a video game where there are several objects on the screen and you might want to find at any given point the closest pair of objects among them. So for this again a naive algorithm would be to explicitly compute the distance between every pair of these n objects which would be an order n squared algorithm. So what we are going to see is that we can actually use divide and conquer and produce an order n log n algorithm for this problem. So formally we are looking at points in two dimensions. So each point is given by an xy coordinate xp yp. And we are using the usual Euclidean notion of distance, that is the distance given by Pythagoras' formula, which is that the distance between P1 and P2 is the square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So we just assume that there is this distance formula which we can use whenever we want to compute the distance between a pair of points. So our target is given a set of n points, P1 to Pn, to find the closest pair among them. And it will be convenient for the analysis of the algorithm that we are going to suggest that no two points in this set have the same x or y coordinate, right? So every x coordinate among these n x coordinates is different. Every y coordinate among these n coordinates is different. Now it can be extended, the algorithm we are going to show can be extended to deal with the case where this assumption is not true, but it will then unnecessarily complicate the understanding of the algorithm. So let's just assume that we are solving this special case of the problem where every point is at a different x coordinate and a different y coordinate from every other point. So as we have seen, a brute force solution would be to try every pair, compute d of pi pj and then report the minimum among these distances. So this would be an order n squared algorithm. So let us see first the same problem if we had only one dimensional points, right? If we have one dimensional points, then all these points lie along the line which we can assume is the x-axis. So we have a bunch of points right? and we want to find the closest one. So what we can do is we can first sort them okay, so that we have the points in increasing order of x-coordinate. Right? And then it's easy to see that the distances that we need are the distances between two adjacent points. Because if I look at a point, the nearest point is either the one on its left or the one on its right. So I just need to scan this x2 minus x1 distance, then x3 minus x2. So I just need to scan these n minus 1 distances and then keep track of the smallest gap between these two points and that would give me the smallest distance among the overall pair of overall n points. Right? So here the algorithm is n log n because it takes n log n times to sort the points in x order. After that finding the minimum is actually very easy. So in one dimension this problem is very easy to solve. The challenge is to solve it in two dimensions. Right? So in two dimensions, if we are going to use divide and conquer, we need a way of separating the points into two groups of roughly equal size or hopefully exactly equal size. So a natural way since this is a geometric problem is to separate them based on their position. So if this is my overall set of points, then it's natural to try and draw some kind of a line and say that half the points are here and half the points are there. Right? So we will do it using a vertical line. Right? So we will split this set not by some arbitrary line like this, but rather we will try and uh, split it by a vertical line. Right? So somewhere which may not be halfway across because the points may be scattered in an uneven way, we will split it so that there are exactly the same number of points to the left of the line and to the right of the line. Right? So now because if we divide and conquer thing, what we will do is we will compute the smallest distance among the points to the left, separately we will compute the smallest distance the points on the right. But this does not tell us anything about distances between points on the left and points on the right and there could very well be points very close to each other across the boundary, right? So I could have had four points here, four points there and I could have had a pair of points which spans this black line which are actually closer together than any two points on the left or two points on the right. So we need to compute the closest pairs across the separating line and this is the challenge. Right? So let's look a little closer at how we do this. So we will make a further step before we do this thing recursively. Given our points P, we will compute points, the set of points we will compute two sorted orders of it. 
Okay. So we will first scan these points by x coordinate from left to right, right, and we will list it in this order and call it p x. Then we will scan this the list p from. So we will sort it on the y coordinate and call this p y. So from p we will produce two lists. Okay. One sorted by x and one sorted by y. Right. So we will assume that we have done this. Of course, we can do this. We know in order log n n log n time right at the beginning. Right. Now the next step. is to do this recursive call and so when we do the recursive call because we have px sorted by x coordinate we know that the line that we need to draw is the one that separates px into two equal parts so we need to go to the midpoint of px and draw a line at the x coordinate separate separating the midpoint from the next point so the position of this line is fixed once we know px fixed meaning we know between which two points remember we assume that no two points are the same x coordinate no two points are the same y coordinate so i just have to look for the median value or the value of the middle of x right and draw a line there now i have separated out into two equal parts by assumption because i have done this at the midpoint of px so i have two sets q and r but in order to continue this recursion i need to assume that q is sorted in both x and y and so is r right so i need to assume that i have some efficient way of extracting for the each of these sub problems a similar ordering of the points sorted by x sorted by y so i need to efficiently compute qx and qy rx and rx qx and qy is easy because this whole thing earlier was px right and then we split this thing midpoint so everything to the left of the midpoint is qx and everything to the right of the midpoint is rx Right, so in one scan of p x, I go up to halfway and I put everything in q x, and then from the halfway point, I put everything in r x, and I'm done. Right. Now, what about y? Now, y the problem is as I'm going up, right, this, these two points are in q y, then this point goes into r y because in the overall scheme of things in p y, these are all listed globally by y coordinate. Right. So I would have to move this to r, then I would have to put this back into so the next one again possibly is r depending on how you. Do this, then the next one is in Q, and so on, right? So as I'm going up, some points go in P, and some, uh, some points go in Q Y, and some go in R Y. Now, how do I determine that without uh, going over this too many times? Okay. So the key is that having done the split of X, we know this dividing line, right? So we know which X coordinate separates Q from P uh, from an R. So as we go through P Y, right? we look at each point okay and if the x coordinate is less than this midpoint so let us call this xq if it is less than xq then we push it into qy if it is x is greater than xq then we push it into ry and because it was originally sorted we are building up x y r qy and ry also in sorted order so in one scan of py we get qy and ry right So in linear time, we can take the given sorted list p k p x and q y uh, p x and p y and separate it out into sorted list q x q y for the left half and r x r y for the right half. Okay. So now when we so we call our algorithm with closest pair p x p y, it will split recursively into closest pair q x q y and r x r y for the left and right half. so we we'll can assume as usual that we will solve these recursively we will get the closest distance there now we have to worry about how to combine them how to take care of these points whose distance spans the interval the line separating the two uh, halves so if we solve this problem on the left right among all the points in q i will identify some pair of points as being the nearest pair with a distance dq okay and now similarly if i do solve the problem on the right i will identify some pair of points as being the minimum on the right with distance dr so now we are interested in the smaller of these two because the smaller of these two is a candidate for the overall minimum distance so now we are looking at points which could be within at dq or smaller than dq across this boundary okay so let d be the minimum of dq and dr so it is the smaller of these two so in this particular example d is dq okay now the claim is that if we look at this zone here okay which is plus minus d distance away from the separating line then if i have some point outside this 
and if I want to look at any point across on the other side, this distance from here to there is d plus some distance on either side, therefore it is more than d. So it's more than the smaller of dq and dr, so it cannot be a candidate for our overall smallest distance. Right? So these kind of things are useless, there is no point in looking for any line which is uh, any pair whose one endpoint is outside the zone, because if it's outside the zone, then it can only be at least d plus something away from something on the other side of the line. So it, it is enough to look at points inside the zone on both sides. Right? So we only need to con consider points across the separator which lie within this plus minus t zone. Right? Any pair outside this cannot be the closest pair overall. Okay, so let's take a closer look. So this is my plus minus d zone. Right? So this is minus d, this is plus d. Right? Now what we are going to do is we are going to further break it up into these squares of size d by 2. Right? So I have d by 2 plus d by 2, so this whole thing is width d and I am going to con construct all these squares. Okay? So now the claim is that inside such a box, right, I can have at most one point, I cannot have two points. Why? Because the furthest separation within a box is across a diagonal. Right? The furthest the two points can be in the box is at two endpoints of the diagonal. But the, the diagonal of the square of size d by 2 is square root of d by 2. Okay, So this is some point 0, point 0 0.047 d. So this is less than d, strictly less than d. But notice that this square is completely on one side of the red line. It's either on the left or the right. And both on the left and the right, we know that the minimum separation is d. There is no point on, on one side of the line. There are no two points closer than d because the d is the minimum of dq and dr. Right? So therefore, in each of these boxes, we can have at most one point. Okay. And now we start looking at any point. So look at a point here in this box. Now the claim is that if I have to be within distance d, right, then how far away can I be? Well, if you think about it, the furthest you can be or the, the furthest box you can go to, hope to go to is that box. Right? So you can be a little more careful about this, but it certainly cannot be any further than that box. So if you have to go from this box, if we have to go Basically, if we have to go more than this distance away, then it will be more than d away. Right? So the claim is that any point within this distance d must lie within the next 4 by 4 segment. So we have to compare each point only against 15. Now, of course, we will compare it in one scan from bottom to top. So we this would have the points below this they would have been compared when we considered those before. Right. So we will we will we will do the scan in this order as we will see in a minute. Right. So therefore we only need to consider this point against points in this 16 squares around it. So that's a fixed number independent of how many points they actually are. So formally what we will do is we have this on this side we have qy which is sorted, on this side we have ry which is sorted, but remember they are both sorted. So we will do a kind of merge, right? So we will go through qy and ry, we will pick the next one in sorted y order between qy and ry. If the x coordinate is, remember this is some xq, our original separating point, plus d or minus d. If the x coordinate of the point that we find is between xq plus d and xq minus d, then we will add it to a list sy, right? So sy will now be a sorted list of points within this band from bottom to top extracted from qy and ry in linear time. Now within this list these next 15 boxes, uh, next these boxes will now be all ordered. right? So if I just scan them then I will find that I, all these, so there will be possibly 4 points which come from these 4 boxes, 4 from these 4 boxes and so on. So I can definitely find the next 15 points in this list and I compare only with those. So this is a linear scan. Right? So in other words, we have this following algorithm. So we start with by assuming that we have set up our problem so that P has been split into two copies Px and Py sorted by x sorted by y. Now if we have less than three points, three points or less, then we just do it by brute force, compute the closest pair and return the answer. So the answer consists of the distance and a pair, the points which are at that distance. If it is more than 3, then we do this recursive thing. So we, from px, py, as we said, we construct qx, qy and rx, ry. And this we saw we can do in linear time. Okay? Then we will recursively solve the solution, solve the problem for q and r. And we will get these two distances, dx and dr. From this, we will take our d to be 
the minimum of dq and dr right so using this we will set up this sy the list of all points inside that zone and then we will scan that list to find within that zone which are the points which are at the closest distance ds now if ds is more than dq the minimum of dq and dr then s doesn't contribute anything but if it is less it gives us the correct answer so we will return either the dq the answer pr produced from the left or the answer produced from the right or the answer produced from our in between zone depending on which of these distances is the smallest right so this is the basic algorithm you have to do a little bit more work to actually code it correctly but this gives the overall structure of the algorithm so we have a non recursive part which is to first compute the initial sorted list px and py this takes order on n log n time of course because sorting takes n log n time then having set up this recursive thing the overall recursive uh, problem divides n points into two sets of n by 2 so we have our familiar thing which says t of n is 2 times t of n by 2 and then because all the setting up time okay and all this combining time is linear we have exactly the recurrence for merge sort so therefore the recursive part also gives us order n log n right so we have a initial sorting phase which is n log n we have a recursive part which is n log n and therefore overall this algorithm is n log n 